morning. Welcome back to the Junius Maltby Channel 4 News and Conversation. Uh, before we get right into the news and headlines, just a quick heads up. I, I decided to launch a blog the other day uh, in light of what's taking place on YouTube. And we'll, dis we'll discuss that. But, uh, you know, a place that I'll kind of venture off and do different things. I'm going to, uh, at times, maybe cover uh, different issues in a little bit more depth, perhaps from a different angle. And uh, it'll just be a place where there'll be more written media, as well as I, I can upload videos into the blog as well. But it's kind of going to serve as a backup plan to the whole YouTube situation with uh, what's going on. And we're going to, we'll get into that as we talk about today's news, because we're going to have to be sensitive to it. So please do stop by. It's at uh, JuniusMaltby.blogspot.com. Dot com, JuniusMaltby.blogspot.com, and I threw the uh, link up uh, in the beginning slide there with the first title. And if you write that down or visit it, you can mark it, subscribe, and take part in the conversations right below the articles. I've already got a couple uh, articles up. One of them, the first post, was just a bio, kind of a uh, introduction to me, myself. And of course, I can't put everything in there because I have to be somewhat private and there's certain facets of my life which I am not at complete liberty to discuss with everyone at this time, but maybe in the future you can know more. Uh, one of my favorite things about the blog, I can have live trackers of the metal prices. So you can actually swing by the Junius Maltby blog spot, and I've got two charts up. Uh, I was actually able to figure it out. I know I make fun of myself with not being able to handle technology sometimes, but I figured out how to cut and paste HTML code, and I found HTML code that linked to live metal prices for gold and silver. So now you can check the metal prices on the Junius Maltby blog. And speaking of metal prices, quite interesting. Last night we got within $3 for gold, $3 away from hitting $1,300. Gold hit 1297 and change and then uh, retreated and I believe the last time I checked this morning it was hanging around 1289 so it's down what eight bucks from the the peak of last night but all of this stems from what is going on in the world so today we're gonna we're gonna touch on news we're gonna read different uh, little quips and headlines and snips of articles here and there we're not gonna get a whole lot of depth coverage on all of this it's just not going to happen. We're going to touch on a lot of different subjects and peruse it and hopefully kind of condense it into one generalized conversation of random ramblings where we talk about gold ownership uh, over time and as it relates to the uh, to instability in the world. I might have to be vague and some of the images we look at will not have any relation to the topics of conversation. I may even have to speak in code. As I mentioned earlier, YouTube is starting to crawl videos with supercomputers and servers that search for disturbing, quote, disturbing images and conversation. Uh, they don't want us talking about um, things that are spelled like W-A-R or anything that might have to do with uh, regions of the world that are currently experiencing conflict. Uh, I believe they even measure the tone of voice and screen the language for the videos that are being produced uh, as a way to, quote, curb fake news and disinformation. Uh, so we're being, I guess you could say, somewhat censored or whatnot. They can pull videos now and they're going through them and they're looking for information. Um, right now they're censoring videos that have to do with uh, WAR or any type of conflict uh, in the world and in the future it could be videos being flagged or pulled down that discuss sound money or perhaps question central banking practices or fractional reserve banking and the way world economies are run by the ruling elite. So uh, as we ask questions or as we make videos discussing certain topics to raise awareness about certain issues, uh, we might see that right uh, go away. Now it's as being a free market advocate YouTube is privately owned, it's their business, it's their uh, enterprise, their website, their domain, and if they want to do that, that's their right. Uh, however, we as consumers in the future will have the right to then no longer use their platform 
and pull away and remove ourselves from the equation. People like myself that produce content and uh, videos where people enjoy discussing certain things might have to find another area to work from and to do the things that we like to do. So that's just something to think about. Now, of course, there is some conflicts taking place in the world. You're seeing it in the news, tensions increasing, and this is having an effect on, of course, currencies, uh, investors' sentiment, where money is flowing, and obviously gold and silver have reacted in the last couple of weeks to the recent news. You've seen it, I've seen it. Uh, prices for both of these metals has increased somewhat just in the light of certain recent events that will be unnamed. Several years ago, I put out a video titled Gold Wars, Military Conflicts, Gold and Currency Crisis. It was a speech by a professor, Ferdinand Lips. I'd encourage all of you to go back after this video is done and we're caught up on the news and this discussion. If you want to and check this video out, if you've seen it, uh, go ahead and listen to it again. Uh, this is one of those speeches that I, from time to time, like to go back and read just to remind myself of certain attributes uh, of gold and its role, the role of gold in world military conflict, um, currencies, and just how it's all tied together. And also how gold itself serves as a limiting factor for major powers to wage conflict um, and to execute WAR. We touch on the premise of ETFs being corrupt and the corruption in the gold and silver markets, the manipulation of the gold and silver markets, and that's something that we've come to realize. We know that it's happening. Uh, we've seen the amount of gold that's traded globally, and it just doesn't match up or make sense with the actual physical supply. Uh, we watch the prices of these metals fluctuate, the amount of gold moving from nation to nation. We've witnessed the repatriation of gold to several nations from across the oceans where it was stored for decades upon decades. Every day, gold generates conversations and discussions, and there's legal discussions held by governments regarding the taxation and the ownership and the movement of gold and precious metals. You and I both know that gold serves a vital role, especially during times of crisis. This brings us to the one article I believe we'll go the most in-depth on today. The richest man in all of Asia is aggressively prepping for collapse. Direct exposure to gold has super wealthy focus on wealth preservation. The world is awash in crisis with WARS looming, economies crashing, and revolutions brewing. Doomsday bunkers sales are soaring and individuals from coast to coast are getting ready for whatever tomorrow may bring. Moreover, even governments like China and Russia are preparing having gone so far as to create their own exchange mechanism to trade directly with gold in the event of a global currency crisis or financial meltdown. But it's not just governments who have taken notice of the problems facing the globe. According to Gold Mining, Chairman Amir Adnani and Sprott U.S. Holdings CEO Rick Rule, some of the biggest billionaire investors on the planet are actively seeking out precious metals like gold as wealth protection insurance amid the uncertainty of the current geopolitical climate. Now this brings up a thought to me, so I'm sorry if I interjected some of these articles without going straight through them. We, we're, you're often and I discuss that one fact that less than 1% of Americans have ever held any physical gold or silver out side of jewelry. So that being said, you know, not really anybody um, that you pass on the street on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just had this conversation the other day with a friend. And most people you see, when you look around your place of work, traffic, none of them hold or own any precious metals. Now, if you see the these billionaires, these the wealthy elite around the world, and you look how much cash is out there, the money supply of every currency combined, and you just look at how much available money there is, wealth, floating around. Um, and we, we could call it artificial wealth. It's just, you know, the fiat, what exists in that world. And then you look at the actual physical supply of gold available for purchase. 
it's only going to take a couple of these guys. I was just thinking of this because there's a very, very, very wealthy person that lives um, near me that controls a significant amount of capital. If that individual just wanted to pay, put like, let's say, um, two or three billion dollars of his wealth, which isn't all of it, and not even a lot. Uh, not, it's not even, it's a measurable percentage, but it's not, it's not even 50% of this person's wealth. Um, let's say these wealthy individuals all put a billion here or a hundred million there, or 200 million there into precious metals. That would quickly very quickly, I would say overnight, um, you would see an effect in the precious metals markets. And I don't think this is discussed enough in the precious metals communities. You know, what if, that what if scenario, if there was a sudden transfer of fiat driven towards precious metals by just a fraction of the wealthy elite? Because all it takes is maybe a dozen or 20 of these people and you're talking about billions of dollars suddenly poured into the physical supplies of bullion bars and coins, uh, if not more. And when you look at the, the total amount, the complete value of gold, ever mind since the beginning of time, being estimated at around, what, four and a half? We've talked about this. Four and a half trillion dollars worth of physical gold has ever come out of the ground. Uh, and then there's the measurement on silver. You can find those numbers in the world silver supply, world gold supply videos that we've done here on this channel in the past. My point with this is a hundred, let's say a hundred of them, a hundred of the world's wealthiest people start putting money into precious metals because they see what's happening. And uh, they're concerned about wealth preservation, dynasty preservation, keeping wealth um, secure for theirs and their own and, and their family themselves. And to be able to transfer that wealth onward, in light of any economic or global um, instability that might occur as a result of name your scenario, fill in the blank. I mean, really fill in the blank of what could cause anything at this point. Um, and then you take it down a notch. Let's not talk about the wealthiest elites. Let's talk about the upper class, just the upper class. They're not the elites. They're not, not, not your, um, you know, the, the wealthiest of the wealthy, but those people that you see that are driving around that might have a you know a couple of Bentleys, maybe some really nice cars in the garage, a couple of mansions in different states, and uh, they do well. But perhaps they're not as awake as some people. Um, well, let's say they they start to realize certain things, or they see a movement towards precious metals because it is a herd instinct, a herd mentality. You'll start seeing it talked about in more of the uh, mainstream financial outlets. Well, just recently, uh, Jim Cramer uh, mentioned it, as you know. And then, you know, you get a couple of financial outlets to start talking about it, a couple articles to come out, and some of the periodicals that these people read that start to discuss the benefits of precious metals. And you might see a shift, a huge paradigm shift, a sea change, where wealthy people start putting money towards precious metals. It's happened in the past, and it could very well happen again, uh, the run for the exits, uh, the rush for those fire exits can get congested and clogged up and it can be difficult for everyone to make it to the exit at the same time and to actually get out of a building, if you get my analogy here. Um, once these people start running towards the exit, that exit being precious metals, it's going to do things to change the, the supply and the prices. And I remember, I remember uh, vividly, and it wasn't even a lot of people. I'm sure the numbers weren't there, but I remember back in 08, I guess, 09, there was a time where some physical supply for these metals was very difficult to come by and premiums skyrocketed. Um, so, I don't, that being said, let's move on and then we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on this subject throughout this article here because this is an interesting piece of information. The comment from the person heading this initiative for Li Ka Shing is very interesting. His right-hand man said to me, he's not just looking for investing in gold mines. He literally wants to find more ways to take physical gold back to Hong Kong and have that exposure. This is the largest individual investor in mainland China. And I tell you, over the last few years of having worked with him on the energy side, this is the first time I have seen him so aggressively looking for gold-related opportunities. Remember, 
Gold is a global commodity. It doesn't matter if your entire neighborhood or the guys you play golf with at your country club or the guys you shoot pool with at the bar down the street buy or care about precious metals. Just because they're not buying them doesn't mean that there's major portions, and major regions and demographics of this world that are. And once that wealth shift, once that transfer of wealth into metals takes place, it really doesn't matter if Joe Sixpack down the street wants a couple of tenths or wants to buy a tube of silver eagles. The prices of those metals aren't going to be set by the demand of the common plebe in this country. They're going to be set by the multi-billionaires that start to move large swaths of wealth into precious metals, driving the price literally beyond reach of the common person. Right now, the fact that you yourself and maybe a, a less than a handful of other people you know are the only people that you know that literally stack, other than this little group, this enclave here um, in the stacking community online, um, when you look around in everyday life, there's just not that many people that do. Now, if that changed itself, if just a handful of people in society started to purchase metals and you started hearing about it more and more often, um, that would be a huge shift. And even at that point, I think metals will have reacted and the prices will have changed dramatically. You know, everybody nowadays, except for I think me, has a smartphone. I have a flip phone. If every single person that had a smartphone, had a smartphone plan, decided because it was the in the thing to do, it became the next selfie, uh, was to buy some silver or buy some gold, there would be a stampede and uh, the demand would skyrocket and it would be difficult. Now, what could cause a stampede? Don't use this video, please, as like some prognostication. I'm not soothsaying here. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not trying to read tea leaves and predict this. But we are seeing signs. You are seeing a shift. There are wealthy people in the world building bunkers. There are wealthy people in the world purchasing metals. And as far as news is concerned and what's taking place uh, in the 24-hour news cycle and what we're seeing as far as uh, the world economy and tensions in different regions, as we've discussed, I think it's only going to increase. I think the demand and the shift towards metals is going to increase. And that will lead to uh, a price increase. I have a feeling this video is going to put some people to sleep tonight because we're already, I think, 18 minutes into it. We're not even through most of the articles yet. So it's gonna be a long one. Buckle up. It's been a while since we've done one of these. They're focused on one factor that we seldom think about. We're so fixated on price of gold. What they're focused on what the super wealthy are focused on, what the billionaires are focused on, is the fact that gold plays that hedge in your portfolio. It's the insurance in the portfolio. It may not necessarily be as critical to think whether it's $1,200 an ounce or $1,300 an ounce. We fixate so much on the price and we forget that irrespective of what it's trading at on any given day, it's meant to be an insurance policy. It's meant to be protection of wealth and preservation of wealth. I'm pretty sure I beat on that point quite a bit here on the channel. Dynasty preservation, wealth preservation, that is the role of gold. Gold is protection against damned lies and W-A-R. Politicians lie to mislead and indoctrinate the people. You and I know that is a fact. They've been doing it since the beginning of time. Governments put out false economic information to serve their purpose, like unemployment or inflation data. Central bankers lie because if they told the truth, the global financial bubble would burst instantaneously. Bankers lie about the state of their banks because if they told their customers their real financial position, they would not have a single depositor. Fake news and false flags are now commonplace, since most people are totally uncritical of all they read in the papers or watch on television, it is extremely easy for governments in the West or East to publish lies and fake news. Journalists lie because of their political leaning or because they are too lazy to find out the real facts. Pension fund trustees lie 
because they dare not tell their pensioners that they are unlikely to receive more than a fraction of the pension they have been promised. Now, I know this is like taking a red pill, and we all talk about that, or getting woke. This is true. These are almost irrefutable, these facts. We've talked about propaganda on this channel. I've put out videos on it, on false flags, uh, you know, the sinking of the Lusitania, the Gulf of Tonkin, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Every government throughout history has bore false witness to their people in order to uh, execute certain things. And, uh, you know, it's just the lies. Lies beget more lies, and people fall for it. Most people that are driving around listening to their FM radio or their satellite radio and, and coming home and um, cracking a beer and, and watching a sporting event, they don't really want to have to focus on the truth because, as we've talked about, and I, I hate to beat a dead horse, I, I apologize to you for sometimes raising the same issues and same little statements over and over again, but it just gets back to that normalcy bias. They've never experienced it, therefore it can never happen. I don't want to call it laziness, but I also believe there is a certain part of people that makes it to where they don't want to believe or accept a, a different reality or that things might be different from which they've been educated or informed about from schools and the education system as well as uh, the mainstream media or what the government tells them. Because once they come to that realization, uh, it then creates a set of uh, steps or different choices they're going to have to make in their life, it may create work for them. They have to now reprioritize and restructure their life, change things up a bit. And nobody really likes change, but now instead of putting money towards certain recreational or hedonistic activities, they might have to uh, purchase some precious metals, put it aside, store some food, look at uh, different places they might want to live, having to acquire and learn certain skill sets to be able to function in a society that is less comfortable, less soft, and less coddling than the one we have right now. Quote, there is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as a result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion, or later as a final and total catastrophe of the currency system involved. Remember, this is a giant game of musical chairs, and there's not enough chairs for everyone who's dancing around to have a seat. When the music stops, if you're not sitting in a chair, you've lost the game, and you're out. That chair is, in my opinion, at this point in time, precious metals and adequate preparation for a currency system failure. I believe it is going to happen. I don't know the time or the date or the hour. I don't know any of that. But it is written in the cards, and it's in the future. Uh, it's coming. This system is unsustainable. We know that. That's why we're here. That's why we discuss these things as much as we do. This is why we have our finger on the pulse while we look at these stories. Uh, it's a combination of events. And I believe that when desperate times occur, uh, governments do desperate things. And when there's economic desperation, well, typically we've seen them uh, start certain conflicts or cause things to occur that maybe take people's minds off of the economic hardship. Uh, and at times, economic hardships, currency wars, tra oh, I said the war word, sorry, currency um, WARS and trade WARS can lead to shooting WARS. Uh, so to summarize, just because not everyone else out there is doing the same thing as you, don't feel like you are doing something weird or strange or that you're the odd one. Uh, if anything, you're the person that you just happen to be the one that the body snatchers hasn't gotten to yet. Your mind's intact. You're observing your surroundings. You're digesting information. And you're making the right decision in buying precious metals. So oftentimes my channel has served as kind of a motivational platform for people who might be questioning the fact that they're buying precious metals or they uh, feel like they're the odd one in their family for buying precious metals. And it, in a way, uh, that might have been some of the origins of my channel because I was uh, just like you. I was the odd one or left out in a community of people who didn't think or see things perhaps the same way I did. Uh, 
And maybe I am strange in that way, and maybe it is strange to want to buy precious metals, but if I'm in the category of the world's wealthy elite who might have tips or insider information, and they are themselves moving towards precious metals, then that adds a sense of validation to what I've already been doing for years. Oftentimes, before a volcano erupt or a major earthquake or even a tsunami or some type of cataclysmic event here on Earth, you'll see birds stirring or hear dogs barking and animals will tend to uh, react prior to the event taking place. Somehow I believe we as humans have an innate sense to uh, sense when things are different, when things are changing, or when danger might be coming. Uh, there might be senses that in this modern era we don't use often that relate to our survival in dangerous situations. But I believe deep down inside they're still buried and we still have the ability to observe, orient, decide, and act upon information that, and as it relates to our well-being and safety. So to see so many of you taking in information and coming to a similar conclusion as myself and others, I believe we're doing the right thing. So as always, keep stacking. Keep your eye on the news. Thank you for being part of this channel. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the blog, juniusmalpy.blogspot.com. Together, we can always discuss economic survival. Thanks for being here.